Okay, so topic number two, types of taxpayer. So we are already on chapter two. So before we proceed to the actual computation, let's know first what who are uh, the taxpayers for income tax for income tax. Okay, so classification of taxpayers. So we have two kinds of uh, two classification of taxpayers. We have individual taxpayer and corporate taxpayer. So for individual taxpayer, we have resident citizen, non-resident citizen, resident alien, non-resident alien, and your uh, for non-resident alien, it is classified into two engage in trade and those not engage in trade. Later, we will discuss what are the tax liabilities of this uh, mentioned, mentioned taxpayer. So for corporate taxpayer under taxation, we have domestic and resident corporation. Then we have non-resident corporation for corporation uh, organized or incorporated under uh, foreign law. So they, uh, they are letter B and letter C. So for corporations uh, created under Philippine law, under the, under the Corporation Code of the Philippines, it is classified or, uh, yes, it is uh, identified as a domestic corporation. That's letter A. Okay, then uh, the newly created uh, in the taxpayer, which is under the create law or the one-person corporation. So by the term itself, or by, by the name itself rather, it is a corporation owned or uh, with, with a single uh, stockholder. So kung tanawin mo, isa, siya lang isa, siya lang isa ang stockholder, siya lang isang tagaya, but still uh, that person can create a corporation. And it is taxable as a corporation. Okay? So that's letter D. And letter E, we have your partnership. So, uh, the tax laws classified or considered partnerships as a corporation for tax purposes. So, except lang for those uh, partnership which is classified as general professional partnership. So, later on, uh, we will discuss who are these uh, taxpayers. Okay, so let's first discuss the individual taxpayers. So, these are natural persons with income derived within the territorial jurisdiction of a taxing authority. Okay, so natural person. Amo na siyang mga typical nga individual subject sa ilang tax. Just like kagina, before we, uh, uh, if, you, uh, if you follow the current events, so ang pinakurrent sa so mga mga issues is that ang mga streamers or ang mga online influencers, are they considered as taxpayer? If yes, anong ilang classification? So, that would be the example for individual taxpayer. So, influencers, media influencers or social media influencers or streamers is considered as an individual taxpayer. So, dapat gaamot na da sila sang ilang nga, sang portion of their income through taxes sa dira, sa dira ng mga effort which is for public purpose, which which we which has which we already discussed last last chapter or last topic. You know? Okay, so for individual taxpayer, it is classified as it uh, we for review ng kung nakita niyo kagina ang atong individual taxpayer is classified into either resident or I sorry either citizen or alien and citizen and alien were classified as resident and non-resident. Since uh, resident citizen, taxable na siya ang iyang income from all sources. Whether it is earned inside the Philippines or outside the Philippines, resident alien should consider ang income niya from all sources and dapat kumpita na siya income tax. So for streamers who are Filipino and residing here in the Philippines, Miski ang income niya from other countries because of streaming or ang mga, ang mga viewers niya from other countries abroad. Siyempre, dito na na-earn ang income mo kay dito man ang advertisement, di ba, na ano, na, na air. So still, it is subject to tax because that influencer or online, ano, online influencer or streamer is considered this resident citizen. So it is a must that we have to identify who are the citizens of the Philippines. 
Okay, so under the current uh, constitution, which is the 1987 constitu constitution, the following are considered citizens of the Philippines. Those who are citizens of the Philippines at the time of the adoption of the 1987 constitution. So we all know that the uh, the constitution before the 1987 constitution is the 1970 constitution under Ferdi under President Ferdinand Marcos. So for those uh, uh, for those taxpayers which is already considered a citizen, so during the adoption of the 1987 constitution, they are still citizen or they are still Filipinos. Then second, those whose fathers or mothers are citizen of the Philippines. So if your uh, parent, one of your parent is a Filipino, so automatically under the 1987 constitution, you are considered as Filipino or as citizen of the Philippines. Third, those born before January 17, 1973, the date of the adoption of the 1973 constitution of a Filipino mothers who elect Philippine citizenship upon reaching the age of majority. Then, those who are naturalized in accordance with the law. So, we all know, guys, uh, there are lots of celebrities, there are lots of individuals that are not uh, mentioned on the three requirements to be a citizen, but still, they considered as a citizen and they participated in national teams and any other nga mga... Uh, ng mga representation sa country naton because they were naturalized in accordance with the law. So wala na da sila wala sang dugo sang wala sang dugo uh, nga Filipino and they are not born in the Philippines but still they are considered Philippines because our law allows uh, aliens or foreigners to be naturalized under our uh, and considered as a citizen. So sila na siya guys sa mga citizen sa Philippines. So, the section of the Constitution that would be hindi natin sa citizen na. Yan lang. Actually, guys, uh, okay, so that is under Section 1 of the 1987 Constitution, ang ining ng mga requirement. Okay, how about resident citizen? It is a citizen who permanently resides in the Philippines. So, we can consider influencers who are residing in the Philippines as a uh, resident citizen taxpayers. Okay. Next, non-resident citizen. So, these are citizens who are considered uh, or who, are, who were not residing in the Philippines during the taxable year. So, sila na ang mga citizen of the Philippines who established to the satisfaction of the commissioner, the fact of his physical presence abroad with a definite intention to reside therein. So, the intention na di ang atong tulukon, guys, because uh, they will uh, uh, inform or they will... Sabad sa gawad. They will be residing abroad for a definite intention. So, may star na to sila. So, all... Uh, in short, guys, most of their time, ang ilang opportunity to earn will be outside the Philippines na. Okay? So, second, a citizen of the Philippines who leaves the Philippines during the taxable year to reside abroad either as an immigrant for employment on a permanent basis. Okay? So, take note sa ang ginatawag na permanent basis on a regular basis, hindi siya contractual. Third, a citizen of the Philippines who has been previously considered as non-resident citizen 
who arrives in the Philippines at any point of time during the taxable year to reside permanently in the Philippines shall likewise be treated as a non-resident citizen. So, uh, on the previous year, guys, uh, ang iyang uh, classification, non-resident, kuno, then pagbalik sa Pilipinas, like for example, 2021, still even though the intention niya is to magbalik bayan or to reside permanently here in the Philippines, balik bayan siya, but still, on that particular taxable year, in my example, is 2021, he is still considered as a non-resident. So, makonsider lang siya as resident citizen next year na. Okay? Next year na. That would be 2020, in my example. Okay. Next. motor si auto yan man Okay so Next, we have your resident alien. So, an individual whose residence is within the Philippines and who is not a citizen thereof. So, ang iyang nationality is other than Filipino. So, may mga businesses di siya or may mga concerns di siya or activity that generates an income. So, under our law, he is still subject to income tax. Eh, regardless of the nationality, basta nag-earn ka or your activity na nag-generate sang income is uh, is performed or done or conduct in the Philippines, you will pay your taxes in the Philippines. So, mo na nga nga rule, guys. Basta diri mo gina-earn ng income sa Pilipinas, natural mabayad ka gid. Ang next na lang na consideration is paano ang mga uh, resident or mga citizen sa Pilipinas who is earning income abroad. Is it subject to Philippine income tax? Subject na siya sa Philippine income tax? So, tanawang tanaka ron after we uh, already knew who are these uh, individual taxpayers. Next, your non-resident alien. Okay, so an alien that resides outside the Philippines but is carrying on a business in the Philippines. A non-resident alien who is who has stayed in the Philippines for more than 180 days. So these are just the interpretation, guys, of our tax bureau during any calendar year shall be deemed doing business. So if you stayed in the country for 180 days, so that would be six months. Okay, if you stayed in the country for more than six months, you are considered as doing business. Okay. So, for uh, the status of taxation for income tax, sources of income would be labor. So, the ang tanaunta or the place of taxation will be the place where the labor is employed. For return on capital or investment, so dividend or interest or any other uh, forms or income as a form of uh, the, as a return on the capital invested, so the place of taxation will be uh, the place where the capital is employed. For income from sale or exchange of capital assets na siya guys, play, place where the sale of transaction occurs. So, please take note kung saan sino yung mga situs of taxation because uh, you will identify the sources of income we, whether it is earned outside the Philippines or inside the Philippines using this rule. Using, uh, by, by ident identify, identifying uh, the situs or yes the situs of taxation of each of each uh, sources of income okay so let's proceed so sources of income so we have already identified these individual taxpayers so if you notice guys only resident citizen is taxable within or and outside the philippines so income earned by uh, resident citizen uh, abroad and within the Philippines are all subject to income taxation question. What if, sir, uh, those income earned outside by a resident citizen, natural, it will be subject to taxation laws sang uh, foreign country on which uh, the income was uh, generated. 
of course, they will be subject man sa taxation nila. So, may mga may mga rulings or may mga mechanism na da, guys, na ginagamit ang aton nga tax loss uh, in order not to ano, not to incur double taxation. So, may mga ginapanggamit na da, ang mga uh, foreign tax credit. So, those are mechanism that will be discussed sa mga succeeding chapters na. But for the meantime, uh, let's uh, know how, uh, kung ano nga mga sino nga mga taxpayer, kag ano ang mga income nila which is subject to Philippine tax. So, apos malang natandaan, tandaan guys, resident citizen is taxable from all sources, whether it is earned inside the Philippines or earned outside the Philippines, taxable siya from all sources yeah okay if you are a resident citizen that's why it is a must to know and properly identify kung sino ang mga taxpayer naton before ta mag-proceed sa actual computation that would be next chapter na ma-compute na ta sang ilang mga income or sang mga ilang mga income tax next chapter but before ta to mag-proceed let us first identify and know sino ang mga taxpayer nga gina-compute ta because it will affect ang mga uh, income uh, it will affect sang ang gross income ni computer naton sang sang Philippine tax okay so for tax for individual taxpayers other than resident citizen so that would be non resident citizen resident alien and non resident alien only income with earned within the Philippines are taxable to uh, are taxable under Philippine law so, income earned outside, wala na dalabot, guys, ang Philippine. Okay? So, income earned outside the Philippines, why na na da, uh, consideration or hindi na na subject sa tax under Philippine law. Okay? So, only resident citizen lang. So, na-highlight ko gina always para wala confusion ta when we go to the actual computation na. Okay? So, the next classification of taxpayer is the uh, corporate taxpayer. So, it is, uh, one of it is domestic corporation, resident corporation, non-resident corporation, and what we call the OPC and partnership other than GPP. Okay, let's discuss each of each of those corporate taxpayer. Okay, for, for non-individual taxpayer, a corporation is an artificial being created by operation of law, and that specific law is the Philippine, uh, the Corporation Code of the Philippines, having the right of succession and the powers, attributes, and properties expressly authorized by law or incidental to its existence. So that is Section 2 of RA 112321 or the Revised Code of uh, Revised Corporation Code of the Philippines. So when we ca when we talk about corporation it is an artificial being and uh, sometimes it is called as juridical persons okay or persons created by law okay so those are lots i know you you have lots of uh, ideas in your mind kung ano na siya ang mga corporations ang ah, ano na siya ang mga taxpayer ang considered as a corporation so guys when we say artificial being it is separate and distinct from its owner or from its stockholders, okay? So, stockholders are individual uh, uh, taxpayers. Then, they are different from a corporation. So, kung tanawon ta, guys, ang ginatawag na tax identification number, so, si corporation has its own tax identification number or TIN. And ang mga stockholders na da, mga owners na da, quote-unquote, uh, and ang mga persons working in that corporation, they have their own tax identification number or TIN because they are considered separate and distinct from each other. Okay? So, matunan ta na later on. Okay, corporation does not include for tax purposes... A corporation does not include general professional partnership. We will, dis we will discuss that later in detail. Then we have your joint venture or consumption for engaging in petroleum, coal, geothermal, and other energy operation pursu pursuant to an operating or consortium agreement under a service contract 
with the government. So when we talk about joint ventures, the term itself, joint, it means two individual uh, agreeing to uh, to to combine their resources, their facilities, their assets for a single uh, goal or venture. Amo nang ginatawag natin nga joint venture. I will give you an example. So in an, in, a, in a government. Uh, in, in a government project, sometimes before na ma-award ang, in, ang, ang project sa particular uh, contractor, ginatanaw na danay guys or ginacheck ng eligibility nila if if they can they can execute properly the contract, especially contracts ng mga dagko like uh, 50 million in above ng mga projects, so may mga asset requirement na nada. So in short, hindi na pwede yeah, to cut the long story short, or in layman's term, hindi na pwede ma-award sa govern- gobyerno sa isa ka-individual nga ang asset niya 1 million lang. Because how can he purchase, or how can that person purchase materials? How can uh, mobilize ang mga equipment niya, ang mga properties niya, manpower niya, sa so, silang project? Kung ang iya nga, um, capacity is hindi kasarang mag-implement sang 50 million or let's say 100 million nga contract. So, sa equipment pa lang adaan, chiko na if he has backhoe, he has grader or any equipment necessary to complete the project. Kung wala sa may ipakita, so, they, that particular contractor is not eligible for that particular project. So, but, but a company, uh, but uh, our our laws allow what we call joint venture. So, kung gusto gina sa sina nga contractor nga makuha ang ina nga project, so we have to comply with the with the requirement of the government. So, in short, the government allows nga mangita si contractor A sang isa ka updun niya para mag-join, i-join together nila ang ilang nga resources, i-join together nila ang ilang nga resources para ma-meet ang gina-require nga na resources ni con, ni government. So, si A ma-combined forces, ma-create some joint venture, ma-updanay sila nga dua para i-complete nila ang project uh, ng 100 million worth of contract. So, kumbaga, i-combine nilang ilang mga equipment, ilang construction equipment, ang ilang uh, uh, what you call that, ng working capital, ang ilang uh, workforce, i-combine nila para ma-reach ang minimum requirement ni government. In that in that case, so, ma-form sila joint venture, kag-check on na ang ilang mga ang mga assets or ang ilang facilities, it, it, if, it, it, if it complies with the minimum requirement of the government, so the government can award that particular project or contract to the for, to the joint venture of contractor A and contractor B. So, okay. So, gin-explain ko sa inyo what is joint venture. But according to, in, in for tax purposes, that joint venture is not considered as a corporation or a corporate taxpayer because uh, they are not uh, considered as one taxpayer. Take note that is contractor A and contractor B. So, for tax purposes, ang ilang nga sharing na ya after makumplitan, makumplito nilang project, uh, that's the time they will pay their own separate income taxes individually. So, si A, after receiving his or her or uh, kung corporation na sila, ng, after the corporation A receives his, his share from the income of the joint venture, uh, ma ma compute sa sang iya kaugalingon ng income tax let's say butang tang ila nga sharing is 50% 50-50 sila so kung naka income sila butang tang gross profit from their endeavor is butang ta 20 million so 10 million will go to A and 10 million will go to B so that's the time the 10 million will be subject to tax sa income tax return ni A then the another 50% sang ila nga gross profit out of the joint venture agreement ang uh, nagkad to kay B will be subject to tax sa income tax return ni B. Okay? So, that's why they are not considered for tax purposes as a corporation. So, mind you guys, in a joint venture, after na ma- 
kumplito ang ilang endeavor or ang ilang adventure together, matapos na be, no man na, may closure na, that joint venture agreement will automatically extinguish. Depende sa agreement nila. Kung padayon nun, Japan nila. So, they they can do that. Uh, pwede na nila mapadayon if they want. But, hindi ni siya siling yung permanent balang existence as a corporation. Limited lang na ang agreement. do nag-updan na ilang giga mo to finish one particular project. So, that is what we call joint venture agreement. So, for consortium naman niya, guys, this is agreement between uh, uh, an individual like Basiwa, okay, para mag-partner sa government, especially for this particular activities, petroleum, coal, geothermal, etc. So, under taxation, they are not considered as a corporate taxpayer. Okay? Next, ang consortium ka joint venture. Next, domestic corporation. So, these are entities organized and constituted under the Corporation Code of the Philippines. So, there are two kinds of domestic corporation. We have your ordinary corporation. So, ang typical nga corporation nga natun anaton from our accounting 1 to, I think, hindi, wala pa sa accounting 1, sa accounting 2, and sa mga uh, higher accounting subjects, sila na ang ginatawag ng mga ordinary corporation. I think we are already familiar with it. And the newly created OPC, so one person corporation. So, this is under the CREATE law. So, corporation with one stockholder or owner only. So, under taxation, guys, a OPC is considered as a corporation. Okay? So, if the corporation, if the regular or ordinary corporation is subject to fixed 30% income tax rate, so the same is true with OPC. So, let's discuss that in detail sa succeeding slides. Okay. Next. Domestic corporation are subject to any or some of one is capital gains because corporation uh, has the right to own property. So, kung yung baligya iyang iyang a property na ginagamit for business, so the gains or the, uh, the income earned from that sale transaction of capital asset will be subject to tax. Same with individual taxpayer. Then, it is also subject to final tax on passive income. If the corporation has saving deposits sa mga banko, so the banks will give uh, interest income on the deposits of that uh, particular domestic corporation. Then, out of the interest income uh, provided or paid by the banks, it will be subject to 20% final tax. Okay? So, we will discuss more on passive income sa, I think, next chapter na sa gross income. Okay, next, regular tax. So, when we say regular tax, that is the regular income tax for corporation and that would be 30% of taxable income. So, don't worry, we will learn that in detail and we will show some computation when we reach, when we finish the theory side of, uh, after we introduce all the taxpayers uh, under Philippine law. Okay, then next we have your minimum corporate income tax or MCIT. We will already we will also discuss this one on chapter four. So for the meantime, uh, let's be familiar with the ta with the tax liabilities of a domestic corporation. Okay, I discuss ko na isa isa don't worry. Next we have your foreign corporation. So it is a corporation organized and existing under the laws of foreign country, irrespective of the nationality of its stockholders. So guys. Uh, if the stockholders are all Filipinos and it is organized under the law of China, that corporation is foreign corporation. Okay? Even though uh, some of the stockholders of, let's say, Jollibee Food Corporation are Chinese, still, that it does not make Jollibee Food Corporation as if for foreign corporation because we all know Jollibee is organized uh, under the revised corporation code of the Philippines. That's why Jollibee is considered to say domestic corporation. So in short guys, the nationality of the stockholders does not, uh, is uh, ano, tawag ng irrelevant in determining the nationality of a corporation. So tanawon you get what Kundi in siya ging organized and 
kung ano nga mga laws ang nag-organize ng Sinaang Corporation. If that is organized under the laws of other countries, then it will be classified as foreign. If it is organized under the revised uh, Corporation Code of the Philippines, so that corporation is a domestic corporation. Okay? So, hindi na natin kailangan, guys, i-identify kung ang domestic corporation is operating within the Philippines or outside the Philippines. Or ang iyang resident, bala, nga ginaconsider, hindi na natin kailangan uh, i-identify kung diin ang residency sang aton nga uh, domestic corporation because it is like a citizen, resident citizen. All of its income will derive either from the Philippines or outside the Philippines, it is still subject to Philippine income tax. Okay? So, that's why irrelevant ang pag-classify kung resident or non-resident siya. So, so much for that. Let's uh, continue on our subject, which is foreign corporation. So, for your foreign corporation is classified into two, resident foreign and non-resident foreign. So, resident foreign refers to a foreign corporation that is engaged in business or trade in the Philippines. Generally, it is established a branch or in or an office for the purpose of doing doing business or trade. Okay, so foreign corporation operating here in the Philippines. Okay, that's how you uh, ano na, how you you identify or this yes identify a resident foreign corporation. Take note, establish a branch. So, may, of, may ano, gidea. Ang physical present ya ari gidi sa Pilipinas. That is what we call resident foreign. For non-resident foreign, it is a foreign corporation not doing business in the Philippines. So, maybe may mga transactions lang siya, import-export, I think, or may mga other uh, investments lang di siya sa Pilipinas, and that investment is under the name of, of that foreign corporation. So, wala gidi siya isang actual nga operations nga gakatabo dari sa Pilipinas. So, that makes that corporation is in resident Okay? So, next. We have your one-person corporation or OPC. Okay? It is composed of a single uh, stockholder who can only be natural person, trust or estate. Its term of existence is perpetual, but in case of a trust or estate, the term shall be coterminous with the existence of, a, of the trust or estate. Okay, so let's digest the definition of one-person corporation. It is a corporation composed of one single stockholder, isa lang. Then, that stockholder can be a natural person. Take note, natural person. Okay, so it could be a Filipino, it could be a citizen or a resident of the Philippines, or a trust or estate. So, estate, guys, that is... Uh, the properties left by the decedent. Ang napatay ba lang uh, individual? Kag kung may mga properties sa especially income generating ng mga properties like land na ginaparentahan or mga investment properties. So, it is earning income. So, sino ang nag-earn kay patay na ang tag-iyas ang sinangalute? Of course, it will be the estate niya ang naging bilin. As long as wala pa na pang transfer ang ining ng mga properties, ang ining ng mga invested properties or income generating ng mga properties, it will be under the estate and it is considered as an OPC. Okay? The OPC, yeah, though it's like a corporation, Japan. Okay. So, if ever nga mapadistribute ng ina nga mga uh, investment properties or mga income generating yung mga properties, that's the time ang existence sang aton ng OPC will go within uh, the same with the existence of the trust or estate. Okay? So, kung ga-exist pang estate, may OPC pa na created under sa Sina. Okay? Namin ko, in layman's term, kung ang owner sa isa ka investment property butang dalute, asyenda, nga ginapa-arenduan o ginaparkilahan, di syempre ga-earn rent, di ba? So, ga-generate siya income. So, ang ina nga rent is taxable. So, sino na mabayad sa ano ya? Sa tax ya? Since uh, the owner of that land is already dead. So, natural, hindi pa man mapasa sa mga bata iya or sa mga ears ya because wala iya paguro na pang transfer ang ina ng mga properties. Wala pa na pang silo ang pangalan sa sinang property 
sa iyang mga ears. So technically speaking, it is owned by the decedent or ang patay nga owner. But, syempre hindi sa kabayad, natural ang mabayad sina isang estate ya. So this will be discussed on your tax 2 na next semester. So, but, ang... Ang mga properties siya nga nabili ni decedent still ga exist na kag nag-generate na income. So as long as the properties na transferred to the heirs, uh, ang estate will exist and it is considered as a one person corporation. So mabayad din sa Japan sa income tax siya nga 30% na fixed rate. Okay? So who can form an OPC in the Philippines? So ara na guys. So first is the nat uh, natural person of legal age either local or foreign. Take note, foreign. So, this is not uh, limited for Nash Filipino, Filipino citizen. Then, next, trust. Subject being managed by the trustee. And then, uh, bago ko lang again discuss, which is the, the estate. Okay? Okay. So, another one person corporation. Who cannot, perf who cannot form an OPC in the Philippines? So, natural persons licensed to exercise a profession if OPC is to operate in this profession. Okay. So, guys, CPAs cannot create an OPC. CPAs who want to practice uh, accounting, auditing, or taxation services or profession cannot, cannot create an OPC or cannot form an OPC for that purpose. Okay? But, for, like, for example, I'm a certified public accountant and I want to form an OPC, but the activity or business activity na i-provide sang ging create ko nga OPC is like, for example, trading, buy or selling sang goods. So, I can allow, I am allowed to create an OPC for that purpose. Ang gina-disallow lang niya or ang gina, hindi, wala lang niya gina-authorize is to create an OPC in the practice of profession. Either... Uh, CPAs, lawyers, engineers, geodetic engineers, ano uh, pada mga actuaries or any other ng any other er, professional activity na natural nga tao lang ang or allowed lang ngay perform sa natural person. So amo na ang isa sa mga off limit in forming OPC. Number two, public and publicly listed companies. So mga publicly listed companies are not allowed to create an OPC or to form an OPC. And your bis if your business is a pre-need, trust, or insurance, for that purpose, you are not allowed to form an OPC. Banks, non-banks, financial institution, and quasi-banks are also not allowed to form an OPC. Nga ah, ang third bullet, ang pre-need, kag ang banks, guys, some, hindi ni pwede nga ang liability is limited lang because... Uh, on the next slide, we will talk what are the benefits and disadvantages of forming an OPC. So, we all know later, uh, i-spoil ko na lang kamo, that OPC has a limited liability. Then, for banks, natural, hindi na pwede. Okay? So, third, non-charted government-owned controlled corporations or ang mga GOCCs na ton are not allowed to form uh, OPCs. Mga non-chartered ah. So, those GOCCs which don't have their own charter. And charter is like an article of incorporation for, for private companies. Okay? Next. Benefits in, for, in forming an OPC. Forgive me for the typo error. Benefits in forming an OPC. First is limited liability. Only the legal entity of the company Legal entity of the company is liable for its debts rather than the director as a person. So, for an OPC, guys, take note, it is a corporation run and owned by a single individual. Okay? So, ang company's liability lang, guys, or ang legal entity lang sa OPC ang liable. So, in case of bankruptcy, aran na na ba ang? In case of bankruptcy, hindi pwede malaot ang personal assets ni uh, owner. So, that makes uh, one of the benefits of inform informing OPCs. Except lang guro, kung may mga contract wala nga ginabind ang stockholder. So, in that case, it, he or the owner will be subject sa mga liabilities ang OPC if there are contractual agreements nga ginabind ang owner. 
Okay? But if not, ang liability sa OPC is only on the assets or sa legal entity lang niya as a separate and distinct na uh, juridical personality. Okay? Second, perpetual existence despite aragalil bankruptcy, transfer of shares, change of director. Still, uh, may uh, ma-maintain niya ang iyong existence. Third, complete control of the business. So, more like a sole proprietorship. So, OPC is like a sole proprietorship. If you are the owner, you are the law. So, whatever may ihambal mo, that would be the policy sa inyong corporation. Unlike in a, corp in a regular corporate setup, syempre may mga may mga election election panada may mga votings panada kag may mga policy making pa kamunada which is your board of directors di ba so kumbaga you have to uh, earn the favor or approval sang board of directors before man implement ang gusto mong mga policy so unlike OPC since it is owned and run by an individual so ang iyang control is absolute or complete sa iyang business. No minimum capital requirements unless stated by law. So, medyo ano lang, point, ano lang tayo, overview lang ato yung i-discuss din. Then next, an existing corporation can restructure as an OPC if single stockholder acquires all shares of the company. So, for a regular corporation, kag kung yung baka natanahan sa isa ka stockholder ang mga shares of stocks, that regular corpor corporation will be considered as an OPC. Of course, kaya siya na lang isa ka pa nag mo. So still, uh, nothing's changed. Uh, OPC and regular corporation are still subject to tax. The same tax rate, 30%. Okay, so another information about OPC. Ay, sorry, disadvantage of an OPC, more complex than sole proprietor. So due to more administra administration requirement. So unlike sole proprietor, you guys, Uh, wala sang duroga mo, wala sang mga formalities na gina-require ang lahi. But for OPC, since it is a corporation and it is under the supervision and the uh, regulation of what we call Securities and Exchange Commission, so of course, you, you will expect uh, some formalities in the administration, in the administration of, of, of the corporation. Second, some limitations on foreign ownership. A foreigner cannot incorporate an OPC in industry included on the foreign investment negative list. So, may mga limitations lang guys for foreign, for, for foreign individual. There are lots, uh, there are some, some industries na hindi pwede makanegosyo or makadu business ang mga, mga non-Filipino. Okay. Third, tax obligations are subject on a case-to-case -case basis. So, most sole proprietor pays only 8% of income tax, while corporate income tax rate is 30%, as I mentioned earlier. However, there are more tax benefits that come with the corporation. So, damn. So, we will discuss that when we reach the actual computation of gross income and deductions for corporation because again as i've mentioned earlier OPC is liable the same as a regular corporation okay so what documents are required to register an OPC in the Philippines so still you have to comply with the articles of incorporation same as a regular corporation consent in writing from the nominee and alternate nominee other requirements so just Read na lang na guys for additional info. info. We will not go, uh, we will not go uh, deeper sa mga legal, uh, sa mga formal formalities kag sa mga requirements. So, ging ano ko lang, ging present ko lang sa inyo. And already you have idea how to form an OPC. Okay, so so much for OPC. Let's proceed to partnership other than GPP. So, under tax laws for for tax purposes, Partnership other than the general professional partnership is considered as a corporation. So, it will be, it will pay 30% of its taxable income, okay, as uh, income tax. These are partnership formed by two or more individual to form ordinary business transaction, except, take note, except, gen except practice of profession because practice of profession will uh, 
qualify that partnership into a general professional partnership. And that is not considered as a non-individual. So for GPP, for your information, GPP will be subject to uh, income tax on the capacity of individual partners. So kung may tatlo ka partner, kag ang sharing nila ay panagtagan eh, sa mga individual partners and uh, partner A will 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 compute and pay his or her own uh, income tax then partner B will also compute separately from A ang iyang kaugalingon nga income tax and file his or her income tax return same with C C will also compute his or her own uh, income tax and file his own income tax return. So, A, B, and C, although they are partners, but they will comply uh, separately from each other and from the GPP. So, unlike sa uh, partners considered other than GPP, they are considered as a corporation. So, they will pay 30%. Okay? The partnership is subject to the rules on corporation and it is subject to capital gains tax, final tax on passive income, normal tax, and what we call the minimum corporate income tax, just like a regular corporation. Okay, so examples of our general professional partnership, we have your AM, season junior, so mga low offices naton. If you... Uh, if you seen lots of low offices, kung baga makita mo na ang mga ngalan or mga last name sa mga lawyers sa sina nga law firm. So, kung tatlo sila, makita mo na mga, la mga last name sa mga uh, mga signing partner good, or maning mga managing partners ang law sa mga lawyers or sa sina nga law firm. Same with uh, CPA firms. So, they, because guys, professional practice is not allowed to be exercised by a corporation. Ang pinakataas or ang pinakadako gid nga ma-form as a professional pra uh, practice of profession is partnership lang. So ang mga na, na, mga mga daggo nga mga accounting firms or auditing firms as as the case may be like Price Waterhouse, KPMG, Ernst and Young or SGV, they are all partnership. Okay, wala na dapat sa corporation ng isa sa ila because that is not allowed under Philippine law. Okay? So, Miss Kimay, ako, I will create an OPC for the practice of CPA for CPA profession that is not allowed. Miss Kimay, OPC pa. So, kung may friend ko nga CPA man, and we will partner together to perform uh, our, uh, to uh, practice our profession that is not, uh, that is allowed for partnership ha. Okay? Hindi liya pwede for a corporation. Okay. Ay, naguna. So, it is formed for the purpose of practicing a common profession, no part of the net income of which is derived from engaging in a trade or business. So, ang isa lang di ka requirement, guys, no part of the net income. So, absolutely, all of the income or majority, most of the income sa sinanga partner should be doing professional practice lang. Okay. Next. So, we have your tax identification number. Sa, so, medyo una-una, iyan na talaga na eh. Iyan talaga mo idea uh, in support or in relation lang sa aton nga topic as uh, the types of taxpayers. So, for tax identification number, it is a 9-digit number assigned by the BIR plus a 3-digit br branch code if applicable. So, ang first 9-digit, that is your TIN, and the last three or four digits will be your branch code. So, if so happen that your business is blessed and damo-damo ka branches all over the Philippines, so, ang pinaka-head na da, ang pinaka-head, like, for example, kung sa Davao, ginagsugod-sugod, ang pinaka-una-una ni mga negosyo, kag na bless ka, kag naglabot, nag-branch out ka from Cebu, pakanto sa Cebu, Manila, so, Cebu and Manila are considered branches lang. But your main office is in Dabao. Okay? So, you have to consolidate all your income from Manila, Cebu, and Dabao. And you will compute and pay your taxes in Dabao. Amo na siya. So, guys, if, if that would be the case, if your TIN is this one, 999, 999, 
9999 and the last four digit is the branch code so your main branch which is in the vow will give will bear uh, the last four digit as 0000 and your branch in Cebu will be will be uh, 0001 and your branch in Manila will be 0002 okay so muna siya so in the relation sa ginpang discuss tax gina individual taxpayers uh, just like me will have my own separate and distinct na pin then corporation will also have its own pin Kung OPC na siya, may TIN na kaugalingon si OPC. So, kung ang tag since OPC is owned by a single individual, that particular individual has also his or her, her own TIN na separate sa OPC. So, kumbaga, kada individual, kada individ, uh, sorry, kada taxpayers, either it is an individual taxpayer or juridical taxpayer or non-individual taxpayer, they have their own separate, distinct na TIN. Hindi na pwede magdubli. Okay? Dapat kada tao, kada taxpayer, isa lang katin. And that TIN will be your identification in all your in all of your tax compliances. Uh, for, for this matter, we will discuss income tax lang. So, that would be your your identification number. Same way, siyempre yung sulat mo man ang yung mga name, your legal name, if you are a corporation, if you are representing a corporation, rather, then, if you are an individual, pangalan man na But the most important thing is ang TINGID. Ang munang nagapahapos ang kaboy. Sa Bureau of Internal and Revenue, kag hindi na pwede, hindi mo pag comply So, TINGID na da. Okay? So, for each individual taxpayers discussed earlier, they have their own separate TIN. Okay? Kag wala na nag-duplicate. Wala na nag-dubli-dubli. Hindi pwede dubli. There's in the allowed ng duplication, hindi pwede dua ka taxpayer isa lang ang tin. Okay? So I think that's uh, very uh, I think that's clear para sa tax identification number. So mind you guys, we will discuss this sa la mga last chapter na I think. But gininclude ko lang na di siya because yeah, in support the, sa discussion na sa types of taxpayer. Okay, so the next topic will be tax on individual taxpayers. So this will be the first topic na may application or may computation na. So uh, try, try to read in advance on the topics on uh, tax on individual taxpayers. So ang pinakauna nga classification na katuntunan na individual taxpayers. So guys, dismiss.